Brazil. There's surely no country quite like it, whether it's the rainforest or the samba dancers, or of course, the famous football culture. It's clearly an amazing place, but I'm not sure many Brazilians imagine ending up following their dreams in Torquay. Well, this is the story of a man who has done just that. Plainmore, home to Torquay United, is some 6,000 miles from Rio de Janeiro and the differences are pretty stark. We call it the English Riviera, but it doesn't seem so tropical in November. Nonetheless, I'm here to meet a man who doesn't mind a change in scenery. Brazilian goalkeeper Lucas Covalan arrived in Torquay after a very long and winding journey. Lucas, how are you doing? You alright mate? You okay? Pretty good. How's life in Torquay? Very good actually. Yeah. yeah. But I know if you compare from north of Brazil or Rio, then it's a bit different. Yeah, Brazil is one thing, but I think <laughs> Torquay is another level. And uh, I think what better way to experience Torquay than a day at the seaside. Uh, so I've got a few things lined up that we can do and we can talk about your career and life uh, yeah. along the way. Um, and it starts with fish and chips. Come on, let's go. Oh, okay, let's, let's go. go. Lucas joined Torquay United in the summer of 2019, but unlike most of Torquay's squad, he can count stars such as Philippe Coutinho and Oscar as former teammates. In order to unpick this remarkable career, I had arranged a traditional day out at the British seaside, starting, of course, with a lunch at the Chippy. Cotton chips. Cotton chips. Can I get two regular cotton chips, please? So, you've never had fish and chips before? Never, that's my first place. Look at this. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. This is this is proper food, Lucas. What do you think? Good, no? Fish. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take long to find out how Lucas has fought hard to follow his dreams right from the very start. Take us back to your childhood. What's the first step on the professional ladder? Like, what's the first club you go to in Brazil? My first professional club was Vasco da Gama in Rio, which it was a really tough time for me. I was 17 when I moved to Rio, and I saw different realities which I was not ready to see it. Yeah. So when you're talking about like favelas in Rio, I, I don't have much favelas in my city. So it was really shocking to go to Rio and saying to my mom like, yeah, everything's fine, but actually it was not fine. Yeah. I remember like talking to my mom all the time, like just crying is like, mm. and saying like, it's been really difficult for me being in here. And then it was my decision. So I stayed and I think it, it makes me grow up as a man a lot. So I stick to the plan, <laughs> and then here we are, fish and chips. Fish and chips and talking, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Successful meal, I think. Successful first fish and chips. We should probably progress to the next part of our journey. I've got a little surprise in store. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. It might not have been the best weather for a day out by the beach, but I decided we should stick with the plan head for another staple of the seaside. So Lucas, it's a tradition <laughs> of the English seaside <laughs> to get the land train. Okay. We don't have this in Brazil? Yeah, no, it's it's very popular here. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Can you let me down this week? <laughs> The land train is a very, very popular mode of transport in Britain. Yeah. Yeah, everyone gets it everywhere. So you, you end up getting a call up to the international team, no? The under 20s? Yeah. My goalie coach called me and said, you've been selected to be like the, um, for, for the national team under 20s. Who are some of your teammates in that Brazil side? The biggest name in their part, who, like Oscar. Uh -huh. Um, we had a lamp trick who plays for uh, Shakhtar Donetsk right now. I was really glad to be like in this environment of, of the national team being uh, representing my country in that tournament. Lucas's call up to the Brazil side was a highlight, but after failing to find his home at a number of domestic teams, he eventually made the big move to Europe. Though more difficulty and ultimately tragedy would follow. When my 
agent at the time said, do you want to go to Spain to play? He said, we're going to uh, Sport in Gijón. Mm -hmm. yeah. I ended up playing for another team in Spain, which we had a, like a really good plan. The manager, he was, he, he really believed like on me and we, st we stick to the plan. One day we, we just received like, a notice. Uh, he had a heart attack playing football with his friends and that was a really sad um, for, for all of us. The person who could really help me like in Spain was, was, was dead. So, and the plane was, was dead. <laughs> It was quickly obvious, however, that Lucas was not the type of guy to let setbacks get to him. So it's another rock on the way. Yeah. So you climb it or you go around. Yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna stop. I hope you enjoyed the uh, land train. Yeah, it was a lovely. As I say, one of the most efficient means of getting around. Lucas was momentarily swamped by local fans and the driver even stopped the train to get a picture with him. Do you want, do you want one with me or...? But eventually we headed towards our next stop on the seaside tour. It was becoming clear to me that Lucas was a pretty determined guy and with every setback from his difficulties arriving in Europe to one of his closest managers passing away, he always found a way forward. Then to more seaside fun. This is another staple of a seaside day out, adventure golf. You starting, me starting. I'll show you how it's done. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's the big man. Yeah. <laughs> I was born for this. Let's I'm very good this. at golf. <laughs> uh, oh, that was a really good shot. Uh, okay, two. two. How'd you say two in Portuguese? Can you do it on a wet Thursday night in Torquay? Uh, no. Let's do it. No noise, please. Brazilians play football, not golf, yeah? Don't make the excuses now. Okay. Uh, okay, oh. sorry about that. You got that? You got that? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That, was, uh, that wasn't meant to happen. Uh. <laughs> well done. Get your ball out. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get, get them for you out. then. Hold it one. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> we'll move past the golf. Yeah. Um, you're in Spain. How do you end up in England? One of my my mates, when we played together in the Flash Palace, he called me. He said, um, "I have a team for you in England. Are you interested?" And I, I said, "Yeah, of course I'm interested." So my first club in England, Whitehawk. The Englishman I didn't like much the Brazilian players, as the style they play in, uh, and he didn't like it me as well. So um, it was a really hard time in, in that point, like in, in White Hawk. It wasn't uncertain if I would come back to England or not. I was in Brazil again on my vacations. A manager from Worthing called me and said, do you want to play for Worthing? I said, yeah, I want to play for Worthing. And it was a really good season, two good seasons I did over there. And there we are in the story. Let's yeah. stop getting wet uh, okay. and uh, find a pub. In England, we call it the 19th hole. Yeah. It's that thing you do after the oh, 18th. Okay. Uh, okay. And you can probably talk about your hole yeah. in one day. So I won it even here, so I'm going to win you there then. Yeah, well, we'll get there. Oh, OK. That's all right. What's your drink of choice? Uh, that's a tricky question, eh? <laughs> you can say water, it's fine. <laughs> Drink of choice aside, Lucas clearly had a remarkable backstory and a real drive to improve himself in spite of any setbacks. Earlier in the day I had seen him train with the rest of the Torquay squad and had also had a chance to speak to his manager, Gary Johnson. I mean, he looks more like a magician than he does a goalkeeper. <laughs> but, um, you know, you lead by example and his example is how hard he works in training and uh, how ambitious he is to get on. He's ambitious for this club as well as he is for himself. You know, he's not looking for his big Man United move. That doesn't. That's not the impression we get. He's trying to get this club to the next level, uh, or help this club get to the next level. And uh, he's an intelligent lad, and he's a 
He's a man, you know, and people listen when he uh, gives information. Are you like local celebrities in the, in the town? Like, do, yeah, do like everyone knows us. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's good, it's like, oh, can I buy you a drink? It's like, eh, can I buy you a drink? Yeah, handy. I get that, <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah, I see. No, I don't know, I never get that. <laughs> yeah. So this is the oldest pub in Torquay, Lucas. Okay. But almost 500 years old. It's called Hole in the Wall, which obviously is a goalkeeper's worst nightmare, but the day is almost done. You've done your golf, you've done your land train, you've done your fish and chips. Now you deserve a pint. Absolutely. <laughs> no, We've had a long day and we have to finish it in the most British way possible with a pint. Of your, water. Yeah, your pint will be of water, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We've talked about your whole career up to this point. How are you enjoying life at Torquay United? Um, it's the first time I'm feeling being like a professional footballer in England. The people uh, want to get as high as they can and try to get to their league level. What um, That's what I wanted. Have you found your home, do you think, in Torquay for a long time? Um, as, as a Brazilian, we love the nature. So I, I love the seaside when you know, mind is, is not very good or not having a good day so we just go for a walk we just go in to see the see the view and I've, I start to climb in the ladder slowly slowly as I planned when I, I moved to England so I'm still on the plan. <laughs> Lucas I've had a really good day and oh, I hope you have as much. well. Cheers. Ah. Cheers, mate. To Torquay. Talkie. Torquay, mate. Cheers. And so ended our semi-typical British day out at the seaside. It might not have been like the beaches of Brazil, but that clearly didn't matter for Lucas, whose drive to succeed wherever he had been was obvious. And it should leave both Torquay United and Lucas himself in pretty good stead. Yeah.